Welcome to the Extraordinary Health Podcast. Today we'll be discussing discopathy. I'm here with Dr. Paul Beckham, your host. I'm Allie, and we're also here with Liz today. Hello. Hello. Yeah, the other things we're going to be talking about are... Leg and arm pain? Yeah. Because a lot of times that does go kind of hand in hand with disc problems. Um, so I kind of just give an overview for people here of you know what we're really talking about here today we're talking about uh, the discs which are kind of like the cushions that are in between the vertebra and your spine not all the vertebra starts at there's between your second and third uh, vertebra in your neck and goes all the way down to the last vertebra in your lower back um, and what people can have is you know I guess we have like a continuum in the office that I'll kind of even go over with people where we can kind of show disc degeneration you know, and people can have kind of mild, moderate, severe, you know, kind of extreme versions of disc degeneration, which basically can happen in a couple of different ways. It could happen from uh, acute trauma, you know, where they've actually injured the disc, and the disc actually, when it's normal and healthy, is about 80% water. And let's say you damage the disc and you just don't even move that joint anymore that's where people run into problems is that the joint then starts to kind of dehydrate. So a grape is almost 80% water when it's, you know, plump and, and ripe to pick and you can get it dried out to a raisin. And that's what happens with people's discs over time is they basically kind of dehydrate. And it could be because of an injury could be, they even have a sedentary job. They're, you know, sitting down and just ergonomically, it's putting a lot of extra stress on certain levels of their discs. You know, your body's meant to be up and moving around. All those joints are meant to be moving, any joint in your body for that matter. Uh, and if you have a joint that's just not moving properly, it's going to degenerate. You know, you're, you're going to be breaking it down. Um, other things that kind of ha can happen with the discs is that obviously you can get like a bulging of the disc there. Uh, the disc is actually made out of, it's the anatomy of it has kind of two different areas. You have the outside part, which is called the annulus fibrosis, which, you know, looks like rings on a tree. It's about a hundred layers of like rubber band kind of material. And the inside part is called the nucleus pulposus. So almost like a jelly donut, but it's kind of a gelatinous substance really on the inside and you can kind of think of it as what happens if you squish a, a jelly donut <laughs> the jelly's going to come out where they tried to put it in right we got to keep that jelly in those in those discs. yeah got to keep that jelly in. <laughs> keep the jelly in those discs <laughs> i've definitely heard it described this the yeah. same exact way several times <laughs> and that's what i always go to in my mind is the jelly donut in between the bones of the spine I will never <laughs> that <laughs> And, you know, what can end up happening, I mean, if the discs or that inside part, that nucleus pulposus can start to push on those layers of that annulus fibrosis, and that's where you'll get like a little bit of a bulging disc, or you can even have it herniate through all those layers there, and you'll have a piece that even just kind of hangs out uh, from wherever it, that uh, annulus fibrosis has been weakened. So that can go straight back, it can go to the side, you know, or even the nerve roots are exiting out. And, you know, that's where a lot of people end up then having that arm and leg pain. You know, they'll have, uh, most of the time, it's just caused by inflammation that's irritating those nerves. So if we can get that inflammation calmed down with, you know, some of the different therapies that we have in the office, you know, that can help it, you know, disappear. But we also need to make sure that we get that, you know, spinal level moving properly there. And then that's where we would use like decompression therapy here to even help, hopefully even that disc to resorb or pull that uh, portion of that nucleus pulposus back into uh, uh, into the disc itself there and, and make sure that uh, we get kind of a normal, healthy disc back. A lot of times that's where we'll even have people take some nutritional supplements like glucosamine, MSM. Sometimes it's very acute. I'll have people take NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine. It's they're all sulfur-bonded amino acids. They basically your connective tissue needs, you know, that sulfur to pull water into those connective tissues. So, in essence, we're helping to kind of rehydrate those discs. So, um, like with the initial, why don't we just kind of even start here? 
you know, so those are, are the things that we're kind of talking about here. Not that that's a, a full spectrum of everything that could possibly be going on. I mean, there's other things like uh, free floating fragments where, especially when people get a little bit older, their discs get a little bit more friable. They really have lost that water content and you can have chunks of that disc break off and can float in the canal. And, you know, that's not a good thing either here because it can kind of go all over the place. They'll feel good one day. They'll have radiating pain down, you know, their right leg the next day, and then maybe they'll even come in and get it treated, and the next thing you know, they got pain radiating down their left leg the next day, and it's because that fragment is just moving around in the spinal canal there, and a lot of those people are, you know, would have to then obviously have an MRI to find out if that's the case, and usually, I mean, I don't want to say any surgery is simple, but I mean, if if it happens to be a free floating fragment in there, they just need to go in there and take that piece out and then you should be golden. So I wouldn't call it simple. Yeah. C compared to other compared spinal to other surgeries. surgeries. Yeah. Uh, but we, we're here to kind of talk about, you know, what we can do in the office here. And with any person that comes in, you know, we're going to first get them, you know, diagnosed to find out exactly what they have going on. And you know, usually they're going to have a consultation with myself to just find out, you know, do they have a condition that we can treat here? You know, have, you know, a conversation to make sure that, you know, your condition is something we can help. If there's certain things going on that, you know, I just don't feel comfortable with that uh, seems like you might need other kinds of therapy or other help, you know, we'll make sure to get you referred out so you can get the, you know, the best results as fast as you possibly can. Uh, but if it is something we can help, you know, obviously we're going to kind of push forward and, you know, get that exam to find out exactly, you know, where is the root cause of your problem here? You know, is it coming from the discs here in this case? And, you know, if it is, you know, we're probably going to also want to get some x-rays so that we can actually see. We're not going to see the discs themselves. We'll see the spaces in between the vertebra uh, to have an idea if there is some disc degeneration. Uh, then I'll basically probably hand you off to one of the staff here, either Liz or Allie here will be doing the rest of the exam. And why don't you guys give them an idea of, you know, what they would have done. With patients, we obviously grab vitals and stuff like that because for decompression therapy, we do base that off their weight. So we need that accurate. Then we do a quick uh, surface EMG, which tests the nerves in the spine. And then we'll do a movement or a balance exam, kind of depending on the level that they're at and what you think that mm -hmm. they need. And posture, we'll get it, grab a posture picture that's a part of it there as well. If we want to really measure the range of motion, say it's your lower back, then we'll have them. Uh, we have some uh, camera-based, you know, video system here where uh, we're measuring, you know, your range of motion, you know, down to the degree. Uh, so we know exactly you are, where you are when you first come in. And we can use that to base, you know, how well you're kind of responding to care. And once we know or see that you've gotten back to a normal range of motion and all that, that's just another thing that we can have for evidence to show that, hey, we're, yes. we're getting you better. Yep. So. It's kind of awesome to, like, see patients who come in for their first, first appointment and we do the, like, surface EMG, for instance, and their stress score will be in the thousands, pretty high. And then they'll come in for their, like, progress exam just to, I think that's, what, eight? About after, eight usually appointments after a month in? is what we do it. So it could be eight visits. It could uh, be 12 visits. It really depends on, yeah, what a person needs for treatment right away. Yeah. Gotcha. But so then we'll redo it again then. And it's kind of awesome to just see the difference. And you'll see especially, like, the areas that we're doing therapies on, just, like, how much... Stre their stress in those areas have calmed down and it's pretty cool to actually see and we usually both go over it with the patient yeah, as well. I mean, it's, I've had patients, yeah, you see them up over a thousand. I mean, really a score for that, you know, uh, the ideal is 96. I and was just, yes, someone was asking me yeah, that the other day. Yes, okay. The ideal is 96 and when you come in at a thousand, you know that things are pretty stressed then. So what it's really measuring is, is just how stressed are the nerves and muscles along your spine, which kind of infers that just structural wise, you know, it's just not in the best shape that it could be in here. Yeah. So we need to get it calmed down a lot. Like one of the biggest changes that I've seen, it's, it's gone from like, 
I want to say it was 1,078 down to like 278 uh, for a patient within a month period of time. It was, that's, that's pretty drastic. I would say unusual yeah. to see that happen, but results not typical. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> can't guarantee there. results here, but um, usually what we see is also you can see if it's imbalanced. I mean, that's probably the biggest thing we see right away with people with the surface EMG is that it is just tied on one side, maybe like up in the neck and switches over to the opposite side in the mid back. And then it goes back over to the same side in the lower back. I mean, everybody's different though. So that's what's nice to have is it's kind of registering what I would be feeling as far as how tight the muscles are when I'm just feeling a person's spine or the muscles around their spine. But now we have an objective test to really show what kind of shape yeah. it's really in and be able to again measure it again down the road again to make sure that we're getting the progress that we're you know the patients you know hoping for i mean if you come in you want to make sure you're getting better and that's we have the test to even show that as well so not only hopefully you're not only starting to finally feel good you know but we're also starting to get you to to function closer to that normal range there hopefully the you know reaching your full potential in the end right Mm, that is the goal. So, uh, you know, once we've kind of gotten all that information there, usually we're going to sit down, we're going to outline a treatment plan for you, exactly what you're going to need as far as spinal decompression would be the biggest thing that we're going to use for disc type conditions. You know, unless they're very acute, we might be using some other therapies until we get it calmed down enough. You know, I've had patients in here and we have used it when they have, you know, some inflammation going on, we'll put them on decompression. Those are the ones that might get a little bit of, I would say, irritation of the area because now we're pulling on something that's already inflamed and you know try and stay away from anybody that's more in the moderate category if it's mild you know still do it with somebody usually they get some benefit out of it uh they might feel a bit achy and sore it shouldn't get too bad there most people it's just like starting an exercise program once we do start doing the therapies and stuff like that but um you know if there is inflammation going on or muscle tension going on we're going to be doing uh things like our shockwave therapy that's usually the, the best thing to even uh, get those muscles to even calm down get that inflammation out of there before we even you know get somebody on a decompression table to uh, hook them up and get them tractioned out so uh, when you gals want to talk about like the shockwave therapy and how that works you know when we're using it, especially on a person that has like a disc condition Okay, so shockwave therapy um, can be kind of an intense therapy um, as far as for the patient, it's a passive therapy, which is nice. Um, so we're using um, basically uh, electricity it's, yeah, in a it's way. Yeah, uh, hydraulic is what they really explain because it's yes. actually like a spark <laughs> plug inside of water. It's the same thing they used to use for breaking up kidney stones, but they have it. Lithotripsy. Lithotripsy would be what they call it for <laughs> uh, breaking Nailed up it. kidney stones or gallstones. Yep. So it's the same general um, technology there. And uh, what we're looking for is, uh, like Dr. Beckham said, those areas of inflammation, um, areas that have adhesions um, or, you know, dysfunction in the tissue. And we're seeking those out to try and get that stuff broken up, um, get that cellular metabolism going, um, decreasing that inflammation and actually um, increasing stem cell production. What it's like for the patient, if you're curious about, you know, the kind of sensations that you're going to feel. Um, so it can be kind of intense, um, but the good news is, is it only is bothersome or uncomfortable during the actual treatment. As soon as we move off that area where you're feeling that kind of intensity, that completely dissipates and you don't feel that anymore. But you're going to be a little uncomfortable. We're looking for somewhere on a scale of, um, we're on a scale of zero to 10, where 10 is the most pain and zero is none. You're going to be at about a four or five during the treatment. Again, on the positive side, it only lasts for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and then afterwards, what you'll experience, um, oftentimes I hear a sense of freedom of movement, you know, um, sort of like a weight has been lifted off those tissues. Um, some people feel d that decreased pain immediately. Some people, they don't feel it for a day or two. Um, that's the nice thing, again, about Shockwave is it lasts. It doesn't just, you don't just have the relief the moment of, it continues to provide relief for days to come. And I think the other big thing with it is it's, it's diagnostic as well as therapeutic because, you know, the patient needs to be involved in it and kind of even help guide where the therapy gets done because we're trying to seek out those areas that might be reproducing 
the pain that you've been experiencing. So we make sure that we're getting, like I say, that root cause of the problem here and getting it out of there. So uh, by running that therapy over there and all of a sudden, you know, they hit a spot when they're running the therapy and they're like, oh yeah, that's it right there. It's going, that's exactly where we need to run the therapy then too, because that's what's going to get you the best results as fast as possible. Yeah, you can oftentimes like replicate the referring pain that people are feeling. I like to describe it as a seek and destroy mission. <laughs> we're yeah, that's seeking a good up those areas that are bothering you, are bothering and we're destroying those those things that are causing that irritation. And yeah, it's it's actually kind of it's really interesting, and it can be kind of fun because you don't realize sometimes what's going on until you get that stuff going on and you're diagnosing it like you said and you're seeking it out and it can be really interesting and kind of eye-opening for the patient as well. well especially with the results, right? I mean... Exactly. I know, like someone described it when I first... <clears throat> excuse me. When I first started here, someone had described it to like shockwave therapy as kind of like it starts the healing process and gets that going quicker is how it was described to me. So I thought that was kind of an interesting take. on Yeah, because it's stimulating your body's own stem cells, you know, so once you get those going, get them wrapped up here, it basically helps to, you know, helps your body heal itself by stimulating the stem cells. And especially in the same tissue, it's going to help regrow some of that same tissue. I think that's what people and what I'm seeing with patients is that they're just getting the results and it's staying too. It's not like they're, I mean, we're getting a lot of that inflammation out of there. We're getting the muscles kind of relaxed and all that. And, you know, even in the research and, and people following up with people that I've seen there, you know, the shockwave, even, you know, once we kind of finish a treatment with you, you know, the shockwave is still actually working for 12 weeks after we finish with people. So they're going to continue to heal for about another 12 weeks after that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, depending on the person, I mean, if they have, you know, mild to moderate, most people are going to be done in a, a period of time, you know, using that with them. You know, if you're getting more in that severe to extreme end of the spectrum, that's where, you know, we'll get to the end of your care and we'll be doing kind of like a final exam to find out exactly where you are. If we haven't quite gotten you back to where you should be at there, then we're going to need to discuss and what we need to do kind of going forward here uh, to keep that healing process going. So, But typically after the shockwave, we'll get people hooked up on decompression. And we can do that you know, either to your neck or what's called your cervical spine. Or we can do it to your lower back or what's called your lumbar spine. And... Usually when I'm taking x-rays with people, that's where I'm kind of marking down for the staff, you know, exactly what levels are affected. Uh, they've gotten a person's body weight, so we know exactly how to set the machine because we need to know your body weight to know how much pull we put on there. Because like with the lumbar mm -hmm. spine, we're looking at pulling 50% of your body weight. And then with decompression, it lets off about half of that again. So we go from about 50% of your body weight down to 25% of your body weight. And then it kind of cycles through that. Uh, through a series of, of pulls on your back, and it's just, just gentle pulls. It shouldn't be painful at all. Most people find it pretty relaxing. You know, they can just kind of lay there as the therapy's going on. They can probably mess around with yes. their phones at that Many point. people do people fall asleep during the therapy. <laughs> a lot so. of people, yeah. A lot of very... people sleep during the therapy. So. It's, I feel like it's just your first couple where you're kind of getting used to, like, how it feels and what's happening. Like, we have a patient who's been pretty new, and... They have started the decompression therapy in the first couple appointments. They were a little hesitant. Unweary and hesitant. Yeah, Looking at the decompression the right word, machine, it yeah. can look a little bit daunting. Uh, it, a lot of people liken it machine. to like a medieval torture <laughs> rack. Um, luckily, there's a lot of science and uh, modern components to it. But we do kind of have to, I mean, we do kind of have to strap you in. And um, otherwise... and. Yeah, we strap enjoy you in, ride. you enjoy the ride. No, we strap you in basically so that we can keep the you know parts of the body where we want them. Um, and that way, when we do hook you up to that cord that has the tension on it that's pulling you, you don't just slide right off the table. <laughs> and so that's why it looks a little bit daunting, um, but it can be comfortable. Um, if it isn't for some reason, if you're trying it out, you just let us know and we'll make you comfortable. And, and again, you know, depending on the level that a person has things at, you know, there's different angles that they even set this stuff at too. So we make sure that we are working at the level that we need to be working at here 
to get the best results for your year too. So, and like they said, you know, most people after they get used to it, they're like, yeah, I don't know how somebody couldn't like this. I mean, it just literally, I've had people where, yeah, they come in, they just hardly can even walk, you know, they can't even go to their job. I mean, I got people that work at stores in town and, you know, they're standing around or on their feet all day long, you know, walking on hard, flat surfaces and they're just, you know, uncomfortable, in pain. They don't know how they can keep doing it, you know, working where they're at because, you know, their discs are worn out. You know, they, we're literally seeing people in that mild, or I would say more moderate to probably severe where it's just bad. But once we get them going on, mm-hmm. you know, using some shockwave, using some uh, decompression therapy here, you know, they just start to see the difference rather quickly. You know, I would say definitely within that first two weeks, it's like, okay, yeah, this is doing mm-hmm. really, really well here. So, yeah, it's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like anything else, it just takes a little getting used to. Yep. And a lot of times, too, once you start feeling the benefits of it, then your mind you know kind of puts that that device in a different category for you you know and you look at it a little bit more fondly Mm -hmm. than you did the first time you saw it so so besides that anything else you guys can add as far as with the decompression we also do it on the neck that's a little bit different device i mean it's that's probably a little less apprehensive for people uh Mm -hmm. yeah that patient i was talking about before uh she loves it now (laughs) she's like i could because she, she just sits on her phone, but she's like, I almost fell asleep for a minute. And I was like, yeah, I told we're you. Using 10% of the body weight. And depending on the person, we might dial it up or down again, you know, depending on their tolerance of it right away. But again, usually it feels pretty comfortable. You're just, you know, lightly getting you know, that head kind of pulled, decompressing that level in the spine again. So it's super beneficial for patients. I mean, they just. I don't know if, like I say, I don't know if too many people, once they get past it, I mean, there's a few people that, you know, they just are apprehensive. They're yeah. anxious with it, you know, but, you know, if they can get over that, you know, like I've only had two people where they're just like, like they were laying on their stomach and they just felt a little claustrophobic. Most people are laying on their back, you know, and they're uh, looking at the ceiling there. That's definitely probably the most comfortable way to do it. And we can do it either way. Some people want to lay on their stomach or something like that, but. I was going to say there's also an emergency stop button so for those of you oh, those of you out there that don't feel like you know you'd, you'd be the most comfortable doing that yes you, you are in control. control there's an emergency stopper and one of us are always nearby in order to help you out or if it's your first or second time we're not going to leave you alone and say all right have that yeah, and you guys are usually within <laughs> we'll about be there uh, with you. 12 to 20 feet so <laughs> exactly yep. so besides that um anything else you guys want to can think or add with the uh, decompression there at all other than that no it feels good, oh, good. <laughs> a lot of other uh, one of the thing that we'll usually even add to that with people that have disc conditions is going to be some laser therapy which that again itself is really super helpful with pain and inflammation uh helps improve blood flow uh, to the tissues in the areas there so usually if somebody's got a degenerative j- disc you know there's just a lot of congestion there too so Shockwave helps it out, but when we use the laser with it as well, we just seem to kind of cover all of our bases with that, and that's where we're getting the best results with patients here. So, and the laser that we have, you know, it doesn't take very long right now, although we have a new one on the way, and that one will take even less here. So, people can get that yes. done right after they get off the table there. You know, it takes, like, right now is about four minutes, like three, four minutes. four to six or something. Yep. For the DISC protocols, um, yeah, it's a pretty quick treatment. I want to say it's about four minutes and 15 seconds. I may be wow, wrong, but a little I, specific <laughs> I, I do want to say it's about four, four minutes and 15 seconds, and that works for, you know, DISC bulges or, um, you know, the herniations or any kind of dysfunction at any level of the spine. Uh, again, it's another passive therapy um, for the patient. You get to just sit there and kind of enjoy it. Um, it feels warm. A lot of people describe it as very yeah. soothing. I mean, like most people don't realize, but they're probably already really familiar with how lasers work. If you've gone to a dentist, a lot of dentists are using lasers for the exact same thing. You know, decreased pain and inflammation and all that sort of stuff so that when you leave, you're not feeling the pain that you typically, you know, might feel with having certain dental procedures done. So I was going to say your veterinarian might even use laser therapy for your pets. That's yeah. oh, pretty, it, that's really yeah, common, I mean, it, actually. The company that, yes, we have our lasers from also has a vet line and I have a lot of vet techs as patients and they're just like, yeah, it's black magic. I mean, it's just, 
wounds heal up. I mean, you know, they're just like, I just can't believe how fast, you know, these animals respond to the uh, laser treatment. So, and after all, we are all just the animals, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're only a few chromosomes if away from a monkey. If it's no. good enough for your furry <laughs> friends, it's good enough for you, right? <laughs> there we go. But it's, a, yeah, you're right. It's a lot more common than people realize. It's not something yeah. to fear. It's, you know, um, it's been tested and tested and retested and FDA approved for pain relief. And Yeah. And then you have the patients, you know, that have like the arm and leg pain. I mean, that's where we're going to probably use the uh, laser even a little bit more then, you know, so... Anybody that's got things like carpal tunnel syndrome, tarsal tunnel syndrome, neuropathy, you know, we have just different protocols for all of those types of treatments, any kind of even nerve entrapment. And the laser is just fantastic at just getting those healed up. You know, it's in the high 90% range for success rate for people. Um, If people follow through with treatment, we know that they're going to get excellent results. I mean... Obviously, there can still be some that we're not going to get results with, but I, I don't know of too many of them that I haven't come in the office, had that treatment, and really not gotten really good positive results. So Timelines matter, though. So if we give you a treatment plan, you're going to get better results if you, file, if, if you follow the timeline Correct. that we've laid out. <laughs> yeah. you got to commit. Yeah. It's you not a quick fix. Commit. It's not a one, one in and out, but uh, mm-hmm. it works if you actually you know, put in the time and the effort for it. Yeah, it's not a one and done kind of a thing here where you just come in, we wave the magic uh, laser wand over you and everything's better, right? If only. (laughs) We'd have them stacked up. Everybody lined up in the door here and we just... say we'd be incredibly popular (laughs) if we had had that magic wand, that one-time quick fix, but nobody does. No. (laughs) Anything else you guys noticed like with the laser there? I mean, in some of the cases where we are having the arm and leg pain or neuropathy type things there a lot of people will say that they don't notice anything after the first treatment or two then once you have like that third fourth fifth treatment it's almost like a light bulb gets turned on and you go oh wait a second I haven't been feeling that for a long time now Mm -hmm. and so it's one of those things that it kind of seems like it's slow to start but we've heard a lot of amazing feedback as far as well especially in conjunction with that shock wave um, but the laser treatment, we've heard so much positive feedback. I, I think it is kind of a magic wand. It's just more of a slower process. <laughs> One of the biggest things that I usually hear from patients is that I can feel the carpet now. You know, they couldn't feel the carpet before. I mean, usually you see them come walking in, they're walking in, and they probably have their feet wider than shoulder width apart, probably because they're even not that stable because they can't feel their feet. I mean, that's just another sign that there's something not right going on. And we should be able to document that, yes, hey, they are getting that sensation back because it's going to measure all that stuff. And we are going should be able to see that, yes, they're getting better. And hopefully we at least stop it from getting worse because, you know, if it is a neuropathy or something like that, that is a progressive uh, degenerative condition that if they don't get it taken care of, it's just not going to get any better. So, but... Yeah, people with sciatica, people with brachial neuralgia, which is an irritation of the the nerves that are coming from the neck going down the arm. You know, those people respond really, really well to the laser therapy there as well and help decrease the symptoms that are going down the arm in the case of brachial neuralgia or sciatica in their legs. So anything else you guys can think of? that would... No, I think we kind of touched everything i think we hit a lot of things there not that it's uh covering everything because i'm sure it's possible that we could have missed a bunch of stuff here we're just talking about some of the things that uh, can get done in our office here but well i hope that information helped you know if you have any further questions or you you think you might have something going on as far as a a disc condition or a discopathy you know, contact the office. You can always have a, you know, free consultation. We can discuss what you have going on and we'll also let you know then how long it's probably going to take and even, you know, what that cost might be as far as the total cost for care, what your insurance company might pay and, you know, what your, you know, patient responsibility might be. So that way, before you even get started with the treatment, you're going to have an idea of, of what you're really in for. So I hope that helped and 
that wraps it up here for today and we'll be back next week with another podcast have a great week happy thanksgiving right now since it's just before thanksgiving and yes thank you for listening to our podcast